But Dane Ironfoot, who came from the Iron Hills to his aid, and was also his rightful heir, became then King Dane II, and the kingdom under the mountain was restored, even as Gandalf had desired. Dane proved a great and wise king, and the dwarves prospered and grew strong again in his day. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today I bring you all an updated video on King Dane Ironfoot, one of the great dwarven warriors of Middle-earth. This character and topic will always have a special place in my heart, as it is the topic I returned to YouTube with back in early 2017 after not doing much with the channel between 2014 and then. Ever since my original Dane video, I have been working hard to bring you all Middle-earth content nearly every week, and I appreciate each and every one of you who have joined me on my adventures or will join me on our future adventures. There will be articles and videos in the description that aided in the creation of today's video. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Please relax as we journey back into Middle-earth with this tale. Dane the Second, as the name seems to be pronounced by most sources concerning the Dwarvish pronunciations, was born in the Iron Hills in 2767 of the Third Age. He was the son of Nain, who was the son of Gror, the brother of Thror King under the mountain. Thus he was a second cousin of the great Thorin the Second Oakenshield. Dane's name most likely means dead-like, according to Chester Nathan Gould, and his study of dwarf names. Such a gaunt name would be fitting for this warrior, one of the best amongst the dwarves of Middle-earth. Dane, however, does not truly enter into the story of Middle-earth until the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, wherein he was a combatant in the final battle, the Battle of Azanur Bazar, in 2799. Dane would wield his famous red axe in combat. At this point, he was only 32 years old, still considered to be quite young, a stripling in the eyes of the dwarves, but valor waits for no one. And when the dwarves of Nain, Gror's son, of the Iron Hills were called into battle against the forces of Azog, the foe of all dwarvenkind and the murderer of King Thror, Dane was ready for battle. These dwarves arrived late in the battle, but it proved a boon to the dwarves of the Seven Clans, for these dwarves of the Iron Hills were fresh and ready for battle. These Iron Hill dwarves drove the orcs to the very threshold, the eastern gate of Moria, and there Lord Nain called for Azog to come forth and face him. Azog came indeed, being a great orc with a large iron-clad head, but he was also dexterous and powerful too. His guard came forth as well, and so Azog and Nain fought, but Nain fought with too much rage and not enough energy, whereas Azog was then fresh. Nain sent a great stroke that was dodged and countered with a kick against his leg, thus his mattock hit the stone ground, and Azog took the opportunity and hewed at his head. And though the male of the dwarf withstood the edge of the orc's weapon, Nain's neck was broken, and he was ended. Even as Azog went to let forth his yell of triumph, the orc looked to the field to see devastation. His orcs were in a rout, and the dwarves slew all they could, and so Azog retreated. But this did not go unnoticed. Nain's son, Dane, leaped up the stairs after him with his red axe, and before the doors of Moria, he caught his father's killer. And there, Dane slew him and hewed off the orc chieftain's head with his axe, avenging his father and his other kin that were lost to this orc. It was one of the greatest feats in war that the dwarves of Middle-earth would ever know, and it was done by this young lad. It is likely this deed earned Dane the epithet of Ironfoot, although it may be, as John D. Ratliff points out, concerning the dwarves of the Iron Hills having shoes of iron, but I am unsure, although I find it likely that this deed was the cause of the name, since Thorn Oakenshield earned his epithet in the same battle. Perhaps, as the Lord of the Rings Online has it, Dane held Azog down for his death blow with his strong legs and foot. I am not sure. But after the deed was done, Dane looked into Casa Doom, and he was filled with fear. After the battle was done, King Thrain hoped for the reclamation of Casa Doom altogether. But Dane said that though the Longbeards would not abandon their king, they would not enter nor reclaim Moria, for in his wisdom Dane knew Dorin's bane dwelt there still, and a new power other than theirs and the change of the world would have to come before Dorin's folk walked there again. Indeed, it is likely that Dane saw Durin's bane himself after slaying Azog, lurking just within the halls of Casa Doom. Thus Dane and his folk went back to the Iron Hills, and Ironfoot would become the Lord of the Iron Hills in 2805 with the death of his grandfather. 
He would have a son in 2866, named after his good friend and second cousin, Thorin. And Thorin would be the third of that name, and be called Stonehelm. His people would be, during the reign of Smaug and Erebor, the stronghold of the dwarves in the north, in Rovanion. They would surely prove to be a hindrance against any plan of invaders to that land, for these dwarves were strong. Finally, in 2941 of the Third Age, Thorin Oakenshield went forth with his plan to reclaim Erebor from the dragon Smaug, and with the aid of a hobbit and the men of Lake Town, they would be successful in ending the dragon. However, there were only 13 dwarves in this party, not enough to hold the mountain against the elves and men, who wanted a share of the treasure. So Thorin called for Dane Ironfoot with the aid of the raven Roak, who delivered the message to the Iron Hills. Dane brought more than 500 dwarves to secure the mountain for his cousin and king, and he was prepared to do what he must against elves and men. But then Gandalf came with a warning of orcs, wargs, bats, and that Balg, son of Azog, whom Dane had slain, was leading them towards the Lonely Mountain. The quarrels with elves and men were set aside, and Dane joined Thranduil, Bard, and Gandalf for counsel against their approaching enemies. And so it was the Battle of Five Armies was fought, and though Dane survived, his second cousin, and second cousins once removed, Thorin, Feely, and Keeley respectively did not. Thus, Dane was crowned as the king under the mountain, and the king of all Durin's folk. He removed to the Lonely Mountain from the Iron Hills, and would rule his folk from there. The treasures of Erebor would be dispersed well enough amongst the victors to make amends. For decades, the Dwarf Kingdom would be prosperous, for the wealth of Erebor was great, and it had an honorable ruler. Dale would be rebuilt, as would a new lake town, and the dwarves and men, and even the elves of Mirkwood, would be close in alliances. But still, Dane's measure of wisdom would be tested, as Balin would seek to reclaim Moria in 2989 with his expedition. Dane would not give this expedition his blessing, for once more he alone of the dwarves knew the peril of Durin's bane within, and like many other dwarves who fought at Azan Ulbazar and against the orcs of the late Bolg, it was clear many orcs dwelt yet in Moria, but Balin and his company would not be dissuaded, and they would go anyway, and would be lost to the dwarves soon after. Finally, Dane and his wisdom and loyalty would be tested once more in 3018, when a messenger came from Mordor multiple times, asking for information on Baggins from the Shire, and the messenger even hoped that the dwarves might find him themselves, and the rewards for doing actions such as these for Sauron would be the return of Moria to the dwarves as well as the last of the three dwarf rings that Sauron had captured. It's likely that these were lies, and regardless, Dane would remain loyal to his friends. However, he was an intelligent and wise dwarf, and bided his time, not giving the messenger a direct answer until he had to. Thus he sent Glowin and Glowin's son Gimli to the Council of Elrond in Rivendell, bearing warning of this messenger, and knew that his defiance of the messenger would bring war to Erebor once more. The Battle of Dale thus came, and the men of Dale and dwarves of Erebor, led by their kings Brand and Dane, were pushed back from Dale to the feet of Erebor, fighting against the Easterlings, and Brand was slain before the gates of the Lonely Mountain. Dane Ironfoot, aged 252, was not unskillful in his advanced age, nor could he be daunted. He who slew Azog as a young dwarf, he who reinforced his cousin and former potential adversaries against orcs and their allies, would not leave his friend Brand's body without a fight. And so it was that Dane Ironfoot was defeated that day but his spirit was never broken. His son Thorin and Bran's son Bard II would withstand the siege of the Easterlings, and after the fall of Sauron in the south, the Easterlings would be defeated as well. Dane Ironfoot's resistance against the Shadow, war in the north to aid the free peoples of the south and west, and loyalty to his friends made all the difference. Had he betrayed Bilbo to the messenger of Mordor, as perhaps other dwarves might have done for the promise of their ancient homes and rings, the world would have been lost to the shadow. But Dane fell as he lived, a hero. The legacy of Dane Ironfoot lived on in his line, which would eventually know Durin the Seventh, he who would in fact reclaim Moria some day. In death, Dane's body would likely be laid to rest near his friend Thorin, and the spirit of Dane was surely honored by Aule the Craftsman for his valor and life. And so, we come to the end of our tale. From this story of Dane, we see that loyalty Honor and valor will always see victory in the end, if not for us, for the ones we love.
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this updated character history on Dane Ironfoot. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on the history of Dane Ironfoot? Let me know in the comments below. Dane is such an inspiring hero in the story, and I'm glad I could revisit his tale today. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian de la Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout and Tobias Goldner, Merton, John Hume, Reggie93, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, and Kyle Wetzel. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of our patrons. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with another timeline of Art of Video talking about the beginning of the Third Age and the fading of kings. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.